All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at parallel circuits, which are distinctly different from series circuits. And I want to remind you, in our previous video, we had a series circuit, uh, which had three different resistors in it, but they were all in the same pathway. Okay, now we notice there are definitely two pathways. If electrical current is flowing from the battery, it can flow through this pathway to get back to the other side. It can also flow through this way. So there's more than one pathway, and this actually produces some very distinctly different things um, about the, uh, how the circuit behaves, okay? Now, normally, you would look at this and go, hey, there's 4 ohms and 10 ohms. That'd be 14 ohms of resistance, but that is not the case. If you add a pathway to a circuit, it actually reduces the resistance that that circuit's, circuit experiences, okay? Overall, the resistance gets less and less the more pathways there are because it kind of opens up more avenues. Imagine you had a... Uh, um, a road with traffic flowing down it and all of a sudden there were several different lanes that the traffic could could drive in it's going to open things up and all of a sudden traffic is going to flow at a much greater rate just because there's more more options for where the traffic can go same is true here okay so the first thing I want to do is show you how to calculate the effective or the overall equivalent resistance okay if you have a parallel a uh, couple of parallel components you have to recognize that say hey they're in different pathways so I have to analyze this in a different way. My formula is 1 over the equivalent resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And we're going to continue that on out for however many different pathways we have. So we put the resistance in the first pathway and the resistance in the second pathway. Now watch what happens mathematically when we calculate this. So the, the overall resistance for this one we would say 1 over the equivalent resistance is going to be 1 over 4 plus 1 over 10. Okay, now I can change this to 0 0.25 and I can change this to 0 0.1 just by taking the numerator divided by the denominator. However, okay, that gives me 0 0.35. That is not the equivalent resistance. That's 1 over the equivalent resistance. I still have to flip both of these fractions. So the equivalent resistance is going to be the inverse of this. It's going to be the reciprocal. 1 divided by 0 0.35, which gives me a value of 2.86 ohms. Okay, There is the overall resistance. That's what the battery experiences. We talk about what does the battery see. Well, it can't really see anything, but it's basically looking at this as though it's a single pathway that only has a 2.86 ohm resistor. That's it. You say, well, how can that be when we have so much more resistance in each of those pathways, but it's by adding the pathways that we get this effect. Okay, so this is the overall resistance that that battery sees, much less than the 4 and the 10. It's surprising how much of an effect you can have on this, and it, it has a, a very distinct advantage and then also some disadvantages. So what I want to do with this is I always want to start one of these uh, analysis by finding the total resistance, and then I want to see what's happening at the battery. Like, it, coming out of the battery, how much current is there? So I'm going to figure out the current. Current is voltage divided by resistance. I'm going to take my total voltage of 6 volts, divided by the overall resistance here, which is 2.86 ohms. That's what the battery experiences. That's what it feels. And when I divide those, I get a value of 2.1 amps. So that means there is 2.1 amps coming out of the battery, 2.1 amps of current. And after it goes through these two different pathways, I should also have 2.1 amps of current entering the other end of the battery. Okay, so those two things should always be the same. Now, this is the part that can get a little messy, a little confusing. So I want to go back to uh, what we kind of talked about with a toothpaste tube. All right, if I'm squeezing a tube of toothpaste, all right, and there is one opening, that's like a series circuit, where the toothpaste comes out of one spot. And how big that opening is would represent the resistance, the sort of squeezing or allowing more to come out. Okay? Now, if I'm squeezing with 6 volts of, of potential energy, which is like a pressure, I'm squeezing with a certain amount, and there's a toothpaste that can come out the, the, the opening, what if I were to poke a hole in the other end, in the bottom, and I'm squeezing at the same time? Okay, both of those openings are going to experience the same amount of squeezing pressure. Both of these pathways are going to experience 6 volts of potential energy. Okay, each pathway operates independent of the other in terms of the amount of 
overall push or oomph there is behind the circuit. Okay, so there's six volts of potential energy supplied to this pathway, and there's six volts supplied to that pathway. Because there's nothing before them that's going to say, use that up. Now, if we think about this for a second, if I were to squeeze that tube of toothpaste and I had a big opening on the top and a little tiny pinhole on the bottom, they're both going to be getting the same amount of squeezing pressure, but more toothpaste is coming out the top and just a little bit's going to come out the bottom. That's kind of like having two different pathways that have different amounts of resistance within them. Okay, let's analyze what goes on here. Okay, so we're basically going to take and try to figure out the current that's going through each one of these. So I'm going to find the current. Let's call this R1 and this one R2. I'm going to find the current through R1. Okay, now in order to do that, current is voltage divided by resistance. I know that 6 volts is going to be supplied to that pathway. So I have 6 volts, but it only has to go through 4 ohms of resistance. Okay, 6 volts through 4 ohms. And if I go through and divide those, I get 1.5 amps. Okay, so that means that going through this particular pathway right here through that resistor, there's 1.5 amps of current. Okay. But there was 2.1 coming out of the battery. That means the current right here splits. Some of that flow goes in one direction, some of the flow goes in the other direction. It all is based on what the flow has to go through in terms of resistance. Let's take a look at this one over here. The current through R2 is going to be 6 volts again, divided by, in this case, 10 ohms, which gives me 0 0.6 amps. That means through this other pathway, 0 0.6 amps of current will flow. And notice, when I put those two things together and I add them up, I get 2.1 amps. And that might be a little bit off from some sort of rounding difference, but it's always pretty close if you do this right. So, basically, 2.1 amps of current comes out, and then 1.5 amps flows through this pathway, only 0.6 amps flows through this pathway. It's all based on what's allowed. It's like having a really big highway where lots of traffic can flow, and having a really small bottleneck highway that not much traffic can flow, but then the traffic comes back together and at this point it's 2.1 amps again that's entering the, the other end of the battery. Okay. Now the big takeaways from this, in parallel circuits the voltage that is constant for each pathway. Okay. It means each pathway is going to be supplied the same amount of voltage the voltage doesn't split where the wires split. It's the same amount of push, just like the same amount of squeezing pressure. No matter how many holes you poke in a toothpaste tube, you're still squeezing with the same amount of pressure that each hole is going to experience. Okay. The current, the current, it splits. And what we mean is it divides. Okay. The current divides. This is totally backwards from what we saw in the series circuit. It was completely reversed. The current divides up. More current flows through the less resistance pathway, but overall the total should still be the same at the very end. Okay, now if you take a look at this and go, all right, I already lost you on it, feel free to look up parallel circuits. Look it up on YouTube. You will find hundreds of these out there. Look through a couple others that use slightly different terminology or maybe you're much better at explaining it and see if you can get a feel for it. This is how we would analyze a parallel circuit. You start by getting the equivalent resistance then you take that equivalent resistance and you figure out the current coming from the battery. Okay. okay, so you know what's coming at, what the battery essentially is experiencing. And then we divide it up and try and figure out what's happening in each pathway. Okay, and that's the basic premise for analyzing parallel circuits.